Look to Yahweh in all circumstances. Psalm 25 Christians are living on earth and surrounded by the same situations of the world, as well as non-Christians. Thus, we as believers time to time react in the same manner as unbelievers do. Under financial pressure or any type of illness, we may worry as others do. During the time of war, epidemic, natural or man-made disasters, economic crisis, or other misfortunes, we may be stressed in the almost same degree as others of the world. Most people want to live in a comfortable environment, a wealthy and safe country, a happy and rich family, stable health and well-being, a comfortable and well-paying job, good friends and neighbors, etc. Most Christians probably want a good church, a good pastor, good co-workers, good fellow Christians, and so on. But the circumstances in which we live are not always the way we want them to be. If that is true, what is the difference between true Christians and non-Christians? Non-Christians stay in the midst of the situations of the surrounding world. They struggle, worry, fear, and sometimes try to escape even by suicide. True believers turn their attention to the Lord. They put their trust in the Lord, who is in control of the situations. That is a huge difference. Let's read Psalm 25, omitting all passages that mention God or relate to God. Here is the result. 1. Enemy from outside. 2. Enemy within. 3. David's situation due to circumstances. First, enemy from outside. Verse 2, 25 2. Oh my God, let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Our enemies exult over us when we are put to shame. Don't expect everyone to like you. There will always be someone who rejoices in your misfortune. 25.3 No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Those who are treacherous without cause can be seen everywhere. 25.19 Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. David's life was so blessed and successful, but there were also many hardships. The more successful you are, the more enemies will hate you. Psalm 25, verse 15. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. The net. Uh, NIV has from the snare, snare instead of the net. The world is full of nests that allure and ensnare us. Today, the internet, internet is a wonderful and convenient tool in our lives. But do not forget, it is also true that it can be a harmful snare, net snare for many people. Second, enemy within, Psalm 25.7. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. Past sins and transgressions easily follow and torment us. The more you try to be a good person, the more they will attack you. 25.11 For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Many people are easily entangled and swayed by iniquity or guilt. 25.18 Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. No one is free from sin. First Epistle of John 1.8 If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. The weight of sin is unbearable for many. Third, 
David's situation due to circumstances. David recognized his enemies outside and inside. Now let's look at his situation with such circumstances. It is loneliness, troubles, and affliction. Psalm 25, 16. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lowly and afflicted. 25, 17. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. 25, 18. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. 25, 22. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. If we pay too much attention to our external and internal circumstances, we will easily fall victim to them. The problem with many Christians is that such a situation seems worrisome and overwhelming in their eyes. The more they mention the situation, the more stress they may feel and lose the motivation or time to cry out to God. First, you might fear many enemies and live in constant fear. Otherwise, you might be busy fighting them with all sorts of counterattacks. Two, you might be suppressed by your past sins and feel miserable and helpless, or you might always be cautious and passive so that your sins are not exposed to others. Three, some people may become depressed because of loneliness and worries. Others may become so frustrated that they finally lose hope to continue living. Switch your attention and look to Yahweh. Now let's go back to Psalm 25. This time we will only read all the passages related to God. Here is the result. 1. Trust and hope in the Lord. 2. Strong desire to learn the ways of the Lord. 3. Supplication for forgiveness, deliverance, and protection. First, trust and hope in the Lord. Psalm 25, verse 1 and 2. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. O oh my God, in you I trust. Verse 3, all that hope in you. Verse 5b, my hope is in you all day long. 25, 15 to 16. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only He will release my feet from the snare. 21. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Second. Strong desire to learn the ways of the Lord. 25, 4 to 5. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Third, supplication for forgiveness, deliverance, and protection. When David prays, he first brings to mind the attributes of God. For example, Psalm 25, 6-7, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. 25.10, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. We can paraphrase David's words, Lord, do not forget who you are, or do not forget your promises. These two passages, Psalm 25, 6-7 and 10, these passages allude to Exodus 34, 6 to 7. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Then David goes on to make supplications. 
Psalm 25:11, For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Psalm 25:17-20, Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. Verse 22, Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. Many people pray for change in their circumstances, but the change we need is not the situation, but the direction of our attention. We need to turn our attention to the Lord in all circumstances. It is very simple. David's life was full of hardships, especially after his anointing by Samuel, but David always paid attention to the Lord. So his life was victorious in the midst of suffering and troubles. When we turn our attention to the Lord, the result is the Lord will deliver us and we will not be put to shame. The Lord will teach us his way and lead our way. Our life will be secure and prosperous in the Lord. First, the Lord will deliver us and we will not be put to shame. In verse 15, my eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Verse 3, indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Second, the Lord will teach us his way and lead our way. Verses 8 and 9. Good and upright is the Lord. He instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Verse 12. Those who fear the Lord, he will instruct them in the ways they should choose. Verse 14. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. And finally, our life will be secure and prosperous in the Lord. Verse 13, they will spend their days in prosperity and their descendants will inherit the land. Verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. In this way, we will enjoy the Lord's steadfast love and faithfulness for eternity. Now it's time to close my sharing. As I mentioned before, most people, whether Christians or not, want to live in a comfortable environment. However, the situation in which we live is not always the way we want it to be. True Christians do not focus on the circumstances of the world around them. Instead of struggles, worries, and fears, true believers turn their attention to the Lord. They put their trust in the Lord, who is in control of the situations. True Christians standing behind the Lord let the Lord deal with the situations. Or they look to the Lord instead of paying too much attention to the circumstances. Therefore, true Christians can live a victorious life on earth in any circumstance. This is what I learned from Psalm 25. Thank you for hearing my short sharing. I like to say a word of blessing instead of saying goodbye in Hebrew. The words from Numbers 6, 24, 26 is like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Hebrew. Yevrech Adonai Veshmrecha, Yael Adonai Panavelecha Vikuneka, Isa Adonai Panavelecha Vyasemlecha Shalom.